You're watching TVC Breakfast. Attention has once again been drawn to the plight of internally displaced uh, persons scattered across the country after hundreds of them in Borono State took to the streets to protest lack of food. The IDPs complained that they were last provided with food items five months ago. In Taraba State, more than 1,000 IDPs are battling malaria due to the poor condition of their camp. Now, the IDPs there say their shelters are breeding grounds for mosquitoes. They also lamented their lack of uh, portable water, food and bedding. Now, women and girls also live in unsanitary conditions in the camps and many other camps across the country. Now, joining me now is the Executive Director of Women and Girl Child Rescue and Development Initiative located in Joss, Plateau State, Ambassador Bridget Dakis. Did I pronounce the surname well? Very well. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> it's nice to have you join us. <laughs> Thank now, you so now quickly, much. Um, around the country, there is no IDP camp. Maybe except the one in Lagos and all of that, that one would say they're doing you know, relatively well. The others, there are complaints here and there and all of that. Uh, draw us closer to this, the state of things in Plateau State. Um, as we all know, <coughs> we're Nigerians. We already know that uh, there are a series of violent conflicts in Plateau and other states uh, surrounding it. Mm. And um, since the crisis erupted in Plateau State in 2001, uh, there had been a series of other crises, you know, um, coming in and um, people are experiencing um, the crisis coming and then lots of lives are being lost. Property worth million of Naira, you know, children, adults, old, Everyone, you know, what is the state? Um, what is the state of uh, sanitary condition and humanitarian, you know, availability of uh, many food and so on and, and so on within the camps that you have visited? Yeah, because the number of displaced persons in the camps keep increasing by the day. Um, the number of people in the IDP camp outweighs even the provision which they need. Government had done its best, but I, I'm, I'm telling you now that uh, the best is not enough. They need to do, you know, what they can. Other organizations uh, have come on board, but these people are experiencing, you know, torture, trauma by the day. The conditions of the IDP camp, I tell you, if you see it, you will cry. All right, so uh, how, how, how is your organization helping women and girls in the camps? Yeah, because women and girls... Um, particularly women and children, are vulnerable and um, they constitute more than 50% of the population of the IDP camp, uh, of the IDPs in the camp, you know, they are so vulnerable. Um, women are in their need of um, so many things that have to keep their lives going. You know, the sanitary condition in our camps are pathetic. You know, no sanitary towels for them. Toilets uh, are not so available. There are issues of open defecation. You know, women do not have privacy to at least feel free to do the things that they can so do. So how, how are you helping? You know, how are so you my helping organization um, is, is helping through the provision of relief materials okay. however that we can. Of course, we do not have government support, but through family, friends, corporate organizations, we're able to visit these camps, provide for them some food, some clothing, mm. um, some, some of the things that could help them live in the, in the IDP camps. I know that no matter how we have, you know, come up, you know, to intervene, these people still want to get back to their homes. These people see that there's no place better than home yeah. because these so, are the so people So the who ultimate have thing is government doing enough to ensure their security so they can leave back leave to their, back homes, to their and homes and become independent. Yes. Give us a, a, a vivid picture, perhaps. Help us paint a picture of the situation in the IDP camps that your organization has visited. In the IDP camps in Plateau State, to be uh, specific, when you go there, you see that because they are meant to be temporary homes for those who have been affected by violent conflict, those who have left their homes unprepared, you see uh, that they lack beddings. You see that there's no uh, proper shelter, proper health care for them. Uh, um, uh, it's pathetic that so many other women are giving birth to children on a daily basis, to babies on a daily basis. And there is um, little or no support at all coming for these people. Once they get a support, 
it comes when you said no support, we know of reports saying about um, association, international organization, NGOs going to provide support, so to speak, for this person, going with food items, beddings, all of this. We have seen reports uh, of these things being provided. Yes, this has been done by some organizations, but there are um, structures in the IDP camps. You give this um, um, support to via the uh, people who are in charge of these organizations or of the IDP camp, uh, so to say. Uh, you know, because you cannot call them and say, this is for you, I'm bringing it for you. You just give the authorities responsible. And in most cases, there are allegations um, said that being said that uh, they do not get those things and those support directly, those supports meant for them do not come to them uh, in the, full. They yes. The IDPs that you, you know, communicated, communicated with, with said this to you, that they are not benefiting from they this? They are ben not really. Yeah, because um, we have known that millions of Naira have been budgeted for IDPs. Mm. But again, why should the IDPs also complain about inadequate supply of all of those items? There's mm. a question mark. Um, could that the situation should have been better than it is Should have been now? better. And then one of the things that we are advocating for is for these people to get back to a home. Let them have a home they could call theirs. Let them have a place that they can operate. For how long will these things continue to be provided for this? It's not sustainable at all. Really? And even, yes, it's not sustainable if you leave your home and you're staying somewhere temporarily for over a period of time. And that's not your land. You're just there as a temporary temporary camp, you know, how can you, how can you, you know, make life easy for yourself? So how can you go to farm? How can you So how has your organization uh, uh, helped to salvage some of these e issues that uh, these um, IDPs are facing, especially the girls and the women? And the women. We have been doing the best that we can because uh, my organization hasn't been funded for that. Well, what we do is to organize friends and family and then to have a network of few other organizations that we do visit the IDP with some of the relief material that they need, like food, clothing, and shelter. Sometimes, again, we do some form of trauma healing for them because we found out that some, most of them are traumatized. Apart from the fact that they have faced violent conflict and they have faced and gotten to see their loved ones being killed, they also have to face the sufferings associated with the harm. And so we go there to encourage them to um, do some form of trauma healing for them, apart how from the provision of food, clothing. How about the pregnant women? How about uh, the pre those who fall pregnant? How about the sanitary conditions in these places? Do your organization also look at that? Yes, uh, we're actually partnering with Always Nigeria and um, monthly we, s we provide for them sanitary towels. This we started with Always Nigeria. They provided to for us sanitary pads and we go uh, distributing to these women. Uh, but it stopped for a period of time, which we had to continue, you know, by advocating that people should support us do that. And so we go there and do that. But I tell you, the sanitary condition in the camp is pathetic. Those places, you know, are not clean. They do not have proper sub adequate supply of um, toilet water. People are defecating in the open. Mm. You know, women um, have to be raped, you know, a uh, number of times, you know, by people because the place, yes, is over congested. And so women become vulnerable. Girls are vulnerable. They have to face cases of repeated rape. They have to face um, cases of um, having to have sex, let me put it the way it is, give their bodies out in exchange of food because they cannot just But these just allegations, look at uh, their the, 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 some persons have come out to say these are just mere allegations, that they are not true. Yeah, but people, those in the, in the IDP camps have confessed it. They have said this is what is going on for you. They are sexually being abused and harassed, you know, and if they throw advances at you, and uh, you're saying no, they deprive you of certain needs, which is um, your right, you know, either provided How by the government, the government or provided now by to, uh, to, other to organizations. For, for, from your point of view, you have been there, you have seen the situation, yes. and all of these things that you have narrated, very pathetic uh, situation it is. How can the government come in now? And can the government really do this alone? To be sincere with you, the government needs to be 
um, open to its citizens. If there is a budget for mm. peer persons in the IDP, please it should be you know implemented strictly. Mm. No, we do not want. It shows that we do not have a, our government do, do not have a structure. I'm calling on the government at all levels. All right. This is not an issue of it's happening in Plateau State, so the Plateau State government should deal with it. The government at all levels should put hands in deck or on deck to see that they alleviate the sufferings of these people. These people need a home. They just don't want to. People have stayed in the IDP camp, some of them since 2011. And you can imagine how can that become permanent homes for people? There are no shelter, proper shelter, no schools, no hospitals, no proper drinking water, no toilets. And then people are living there year in, year out under, you that, know, the support that of That is why people. I asked if, if, if so the, the government, government can handle yes, this can, alone. The government should be able to handle this. If the government cannot but handle But the state it, government is also government has to do something should find as ways, well. Yes, of doing so. The government should collaborate with other agencies. The government should meet the people at the point of their needs because the people are suffering. If you get there, it's particular. And I tell you, you will not cease crying when you see the situation, particularly women and children, because they fall more than 50% of the population of the IDPs. Hmm. Yeah, so it's better to get. Mike, you want to say something? Yeah, the, the, the point there is, uh, wh when it comes to this, this challenge, sometimes we have heard of donations from international organizations, from yeah. individuals and all of that. Yes. We, we, we see in some places the warehouses are full mm -hmm. of food. When it comes to coordinating all of these and channeling, channeling them to the IEPs, right. yes. what is lacking in that? What's the missing thing in there? Um, I have to be honest with you, some persons or some individuals are selfish. Rather than work for the benefit of the people in the IDP, they work for themselves. If you see the sufferings of the people, you will want to do that, add to the, what the government is doing, or well, add to what the, the other are the, are the agencies IDPs are doing. ready to go back home? Are, are they they are they all ready like to go back home. They are tired. That's not their home. Well, what is, some the, of them are out of businesses. Some of them are out of farming. Some of them, this has caused so much backwardness But there are also concerns life. of security situation or their safety when they return. Yeah, but they are not also safe in the IDP camp. Mm. They are not either safe in that place. So the government should, proper, prop, should provide proper security for them. Yeah. Everybody is not safe in Nigeria, as long as we're concerned. Because you're moving, you're innocently moving, and then the bomb is blasting where you are. So therefore, the government needs to put proper security structures in place everywhere, whether in the IDP camps or outside the IDP camp. All right. Ambassador Bridget Dakis, the Executive Director of Women and Girl Child Rescue and Development Initiative. Thank you for your time on TVC Breakfast. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you so All much. Right.